remember that I also have to have a microphone in my hand at the same time, which is going to make it really fun for me to jump around a lot. <laughs> I'll try to do this with my uninjured hand and leave the lighter clicker in my other hand. <laughs> okay. So just in case you didn't know, you're in the room for, for Fighting Core FUD, otherwise, we, otherwise known as We Need a Contrib Champion. If anyone has the musical song keyed up, you might want to play it right now. No one? Okay. Someone laughed at that. I was missing. You know, you're talking about and we released your and we're done. And we forgot to add the musical cue. Remind me what's funny. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Okay, so you might wonder who the heck this weird person is in front of you, and yes, I did in fact make that threat to Krell at DrupalCon Austin about making a hat duel, <laughs> and neither of us showed up, so I won by default. <laughs> my, name <is> Tess, <laughs> my, uh, my name is Tess Flynn, otherwise known as Socket Wench. That's Wench, not Wrench. I am the module co-maintainer for Flag, for Flag Friend, and for Example Module. So speaking of Example Module, Actually, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. I am a, a Drupal developer with what used to be known as Blink Reaction, now is FFW, and my favorite interpretation of that name is Fruit Flavored Wombats. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of ones That's that would have to be censored if I were to actually use it, but. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it actually is. <laughs> Nancy's going to be watching this video later, I'm certain. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, we are hiring. You might want to uh, check out our booth. We're right in the front and to the left. So just talk to, with all the wonderful people here. Who wants a t-shirt? I've got a medium. Oh, I think you raised your hand first. If not, hand it to someone who does. <laughs> and then if you still want a shirt, Come down to the booth. We've got more. We've got tons more to give away. So who in here has heard of Example Module before? That's practically everybody. So now this is going to make the next three minutes of my life very boring. I like to call it the most useful, useful useless module ever because it provides real functional examples that you should never use on a real site. It provides code examples for Drupal developers so that you can actually learn new and existing APIs covering a broad range of Drupal's core functionality. Usually it has ki uh, kind of a SNL soup rule about it. In other words, no code, no core, no example. In other words, if it's not a core, if it doesn't cover core APIs, it's not an example. If it's not a code example, it's not, uh, not an example module. So that's what that means. It's for both new and old Drupal developers because as APIs change, we might need to uh, get new information, new APIs, new examples to know how to use things. And you can, of course, find this on Drupal.org. So why do we even have example module? This is one of the th things that I started working on example module around the Drupal 8 cycle while working on flag module. And I found out that examples was lagging way behind and was having a lot of problems and a lot of struggles. And I thought, that, that isn't right. What's going on? So I had to go and investigate this. So why do we have example code? Well, if you're a new developer and you're confronting a new version of core, it's really intimidating. It's this big, huge monster that's going to consume you. And all you, you just, you're sitting there asking yourself, where the heck do I even start? And often the only thing that we can hand people as advice is don't get eaten. There's a lot of different ways of learning new, new and existing core APIs. The easiest and cheapest is probably source code. You need the most experience to learn it because you usually have to know coding, usually you have to know some Drupalisms, you have to know where to find it. But it doesn't cost anything because it's source code and it's an open source project. Now, if you need a little bit more uh, direction, there's community documentation. It has more pros, but it's not actually professionally curated or produced. So as a result, it's not, necessar not necessarily the highest quality stuff, but it's also very cheap to get to. After that, there's educational pros. There's uh, things like you can buy a book or you can 
uh, subscribe to a movie service like um, DrupalEyes.me to educate yourself about what you can do to learn Drupal core APIs. And finally, at the very apex, is paid training. It costs the most, but usually there's the least amount of, you know, there, you would need the least amount of experience possible to actually start there, because there's a person there to guide you and to answer every question. Now, one thing that a lot of core developers have asked me in time is, isn't core code enough? Why don't you just learn from looking at core? Well, there's a lot of good reasons why core code is a bad way to learn Drupal. Source code is actually a medium. It's like any language. It doesn't matter, while the execution is the same, like in language we want to communicate, in programming code we want to execute an application. But how it's written is actually very, very important. What we want to do with it is important. When we actually sit down to write a piece of code, there's a number of different considerations that we might have. If you're looking at a piece of code, you might want to ask yourself, should I make this code fast? Should I make it easy to expand or maintain? Or what if, should I make it easy to understand? <laughs> the problem with all of these is that you usually can only pick two and sometimes only pick one. Learning from core code is really, really confusing. It's not only confusing in 7, it's even more confusing in Drupal 8. And I know because I've had to do it for two years. Sometimes I don't think it's possible to have people use a debugger. Yeah. Yeah, you often have to use a debugger just to actually learn what's going on in core code. You can't just sit down and read it. But that's not even the only thing. Modules aren't isolated from each other. So you might be in one module going, okay, I just need to understand how an entity is made. And suddenly you're in user module and you have no idea how you got there. And then you jump to taxonomy module and it's like, what the heck is going on? And then suddenly you're, you're way in like, I don't know, server source code and you think that it's the matrix and the walls of reality are crashing down upon you. Fieldless item interface, thank you. Flag module had this problem because you had the flag function which called the flag flag class which call, called the flag 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 uh, function which called the flag 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 user function and then it finally added something to the database. <laughs> I put a stop to that, thankfully. Core code is also confusing because it's commented, yes, but it's commented for information, not for instruction. It's kind of the difference between information and knowledge. While information gives you small, immediate pieces of information that you need to understand a very small piece of code, it doesn't connect anything. It doesn't provide context. And that's what example code actually needs to do. Example code provides context and connection, where core code cannot. And while doing this, it also provides functional modules so you can see what happens when you change something or when you break something. So how is example module developed? It's developed a lot like a lot of other modules. It's volunteer driven and features are requested by the community. If we actually start looking at how the core, how the commits work out between example module and also core, we start noticing some interesting things. Now, we have two, uh, two data points here. One is core, which is in the blue, and then we have examples, which is in the red. Examples is times 10 for obvious reasons of number of commits. If the example module had that many commits, I'd be really impressed. Let's break this down, see what really happened. You'll notice that we had a spike of activity after Drupal 7 Alpha 1 was released, and then it kind of tapered off. We get an RC, and then we get a burst of activity, and it tapers off. We get around stable, and then we discover we need additional examples, like the table sort example. So we, add, we added a new example, and a new amount of activity happened. And then it just kind of hummed along. And then you'll notice we start working on Drupal 8, and there's a lot of commits in Drupal 8. But you might notice something. The pattern is different for examples. It's not giving us a consistent one. It's kind of just thrumming along in the background. If we simplify this further, it looks a bit like this. When we have a release, we have a lot of initial work when the uh, when example module was first created. Then we go into the Drupal 7 pre-release cycle. And we have a pretty standard expected rise and fall of activity 
as new stuff is added to the system. We get to the post-release cycle, and we actually have another rise and fall of activity. <coughs> and that's good, that's healthy, that's what you want from a project that does examples. But then you get to Drupal 8, and you'll notice that we've got a problem. We've got a long period of almost no activity, and then just blips of activity going forward. What we can learn from this is examples is kind of special. It bootstraps a lot of contrib, uh, contrib modules. It also signals to other developers that core is ready for development. So what's the problem with all of this? Why am I up here begging people to listen to this weird idea I have about a contrib champion and why we have so much core FUD today? Well, the problem is Drupal 8 kind of changed the rules. We reached kind of an inflection point with Drupal 8. We were doing pretty well in the Drupal 7 cycle, and then Drupal 8 happened. Drupal 8's really long, and lots of things changed, and that had a lot of, a lot of problems become really apparent during that development cycle. We have a significantly longer development cycle, longer than any other release of Drupal in history. This is adversely affecting Contrib and Examples, who is a forerunner for Contrib development. Also, the code is really, really, really different. I like to kind of imagine this as a generational discussion between, you know, core developers, the next generation, and then the original series of contrib developers. And you'll have the core developer saying, well, if you can't port your module, then rewrite it. But the contrib developer listens to that and, go, and goes, I cannot do it, Captain. The core is too different. <laughs> I'm glad that I got a laugh. <laughs> My housemates tell me not to do that voice at night. <laughs> In Drupal 7, we had some knowledge silos. But generally, we had knowledge silos, and the whole spread of that knowledge was kind of broad. We had a lot of people who were in, a, in example module, and we had a lot of people in core. And generally, there was new stuff, but it wasn't as pronounced of a problem. Generally, the knowledge was fairly easy to access, and we understood it, and we could get new contributors to work on example module while also working on core. In Drupal 8, it's a lot worse. Our knowledge silos are very narrow and deep compared to the Drupal 7 cycle. There's so much new stuff in Drupal 8 that there's no way that contrib developers can keep up. And because there's so ac you know, much activity in Drupal 8 compared to Drupal 7, we can't seem to get the buy-in from core developers to assist us to do a knowledge transfer necessary for us to write examples. Furthermore, because everything is changing, there's a shadow of doubt that hangs over every piece of information that existing example module developers and contrib developers <coughs> already know and are comfortable with. Do we still have hooks? Do we still use the form API? Do we still use simple tests? Do we even know these things yet? The answer is we do. But how many contrib developers actually know that and are actually comfortable knowing that and expressing that? This shadow of doubt hangs over all Drupal APIs. You might have a contrib developer thinking to themselves late at night while they're working on their module over a tuna fish sandwich. And they're going, this API is largely unchanged, but how it connects to everything has. I mean, should I even be using this particular API? What if it goes away in the next release? And then the despair really sets in and you start wondering, how can I make any sort of a decision here at all? And then at three in the morning, after you've watched Star Trek three and you're wondering why you're still awake, you ask yourself, you know, maybe core devs should do this. I mean, then at least examples would keep up with core. So we filed an issue, issue 1532612, uh, to move the example module project into core. So why would we want to do this? Well, development is strongly tied to core in a way that is not the same for other contrib modules. In a perfect world, as we get to every release, every release cycle phase, core alpha, core beta, stable, we'll actually release new code. So 
in the core alpha cycle, we'll actually have critical examples updated and created be right before the beta. <laughs> Once the beta one is finished, we finish all our critical examples and we start a lot of non-critical examples. So things like you know entity uh, using entities and using fields, we got all of that done. But then we start adding some more unusual things like, okay, maybe we want to do a REST API example. Once we have a stable core, we'll finish up everything, get all our non-critical examples done, and then after that, we just want to do minor fixes. This is an ideal world that we want for example module. Contrib also has kind of limited visibility. If you ever try to figure out how to, de uh, to go and enable a module, as a new developer, it's really, really complicated. And examples is even worse. Angela Webchick Byron has said this about example module. It's practically impossible to find unless if you are already in the community. So if you're not in the community already, you have no idea what this is or even that it exists. It kind of looks like this. If you're a new developer, you're going to go to drupal.org. You're going to download Drupal, in this case Drupal 8. You're going to install it on your web server because it has instructions how to do that. And then you're going to go, well, I want to do some development for this, but there's no examples here. Where do I find examples? Okay, well, well there's got to be examples somewhere. So I'm going to go search online. You, find, uh, you search online for examples. You find them and download them. And say, like, okay, great. Now I can work on examples. Uh, what, what's the heck, what the heck is module? And then you're sitting there head desking that poor new developer who doesn't know what this stuff is. We've got to make this shorter. It's way too complicated. It would be wonderful if we can get to this point, what you would expect with any kind of web applications. And all we have to do is click enable examples and then there's happiness. That's what we would like for new developers to experience. <laughs> Another idea is that example module can provide tests for core. So our Fay once suggested that example modules could be used for core tests to cr uh, as mock modules so that uh, we don't have to make as many mock modules to support core tests. I mean, that makes perfect sense. These things are examples. They're, standard, uh, they're standardized pieces of core functionality. We should be able to just test them. It seems like a natural fit. And it kind of works like this. You have you know, example modules and you have Drupal. And Drupal 8 singing, you know, I got some shiny new code for you. And examples is like, cool, I'll test it. And then sounding a bit like Suze from Gravity Falls, it's going to say, uh, did? I, th I think there's a bug in here. Of course, Drupal is saying, but it's so shiny. <laughs> shiny new code. Bugs are only also only the tip of the iceberg. At the very top, we have actual bugs, real problems. But there's other things that we can test, like developer experience, like feature gaps. Remember in Entity API, how we got through Drupal 7 and we realized we didn't have a complete Entity API and we had to add a contrib module that everybody depends upon? Why didn't we catch that earlier? And also unexpected use, weird things like what if I make this annotation completely wrong? What if I derive this class from something really, really weird? What if I override this particular, uh, this particular method during the time that we're developing it so that we can actually go, you know, this documentation isn't particularly clear. We need to make that better to understand, to tell other contrib developers what to do so I make the mistake first so that no one else has to. Also, it solves example module maintainership issues. We have that in those knowledge <laughs> silos, and they're only going to get worse the more outside of Drupal technologies we bring in. So should an example module live where the knowledge silos are? That way, it keeps up with core all the time. Also, example modules could help people learn core if it was actually in core. So we'll have a new developer. They're going to find a bug in examples when they're in core. They're going to file a new issue on Drupal.org. Maybe they'll even submit a patch. They'll get that into core, and then there's happiness because we've created another contributor. It's easier, too, because all of example modules are isolated from core. So we it makes it <coughs> easier to contribute to core 
without having to figure out all the weird cross-linking that's involved in understanding core code. So all of this sounds wonderful. Why, why didn't we do this already? Why is example module not in core today? Well, all of this sounds great, except... Well, don't give it away. <laughs> except that example module isn't really core. In core, examples really wouldn't be isolated. As soon as we start using it in core, it's going to develop cross-linking. There's no way to do that unless if we apply rigorous processes and reviews, and we're probably not going to be able to pull that off. Question. Yeah, um, what context do you mean isolated in, in this case? Like, because uh, if it's a module, whether it's contrib or in core, what would be the difference? Well, it's kind of like the, um, what I was saying earlier. If you're trying to follow how a particular module works, in a core module, like in the node module, it often does some weird things and has weird generalizations and that it can produce false positives if you're trying to read that as a new developer to understand what's going on. So sometimes you will get to a point where it jumps somewhere else in, co in core, which doesn't make any sense. And if it was a conventional contrib module, you would never see that. So it, there are weird little special cases and uh, special snowflakes <laughs> in almost all of the core modules because it just kind of has to be that way at some point. So basically it would, it would, uh... so basically it would just develop those bad habits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would develop those bad habits after a while. Also, there's a bit of a motive and purpose mismatch. Example's goal is really to support contrib devs. It's not meant to be Core's test case. So Sun actually uh, said something about this. He said, if anything lacks tests, we need better test coverage. We don't need examples. Core tests are, quite frankly, really, really weird. They have to account for maluse, abuse, and as someone once described it aptly, pure stupidity. So the tests are already complicated enough without adding example modules on top of it. This becomes part of that weird isolation lacking that we're going to get because we have to do all this weird stuff to the tests that we would never do for a contrib module, but we would have to if we start putting it in there as a test case. Also, this is kind of a personal beef of mine. Writing example code is a skill. And it's not a skill that a lot of core, uh, core contributors have. It's more than just adding a lot of comments to your code. Adding a lot of comments isn't writing example code. That's adding a lot of comments. It's different considerations from production code. You'll structure your program differently. You'll break out certain methods differently. You'll write tons and tons of little tiny functions to do step one, step two, step three, and step four and no one would ever bother doing that in production code. It's a waste of everybody's time from production code points of view. But from example code, where education is the goal, that's very important. Also, maintaining examples while, uh, while developing new APIs would be painful. It's all the agony of updating examples and core at the same time. So if you have your core developer and they're starting to work on a new, a new version of Drupal core, you have example modules and they're living in core, hypothetically. So as we start this process off, examples are going to say, dude, everything's broken. And of course, the core developer is saying, can't you see I'm busy? I'm trying to work on a new version of core. And of course, well, fine, Dan, dude, I'm just going to fail all your tests. And of course, this does not make anybody happy. <laughs> And the thing is, this continues as the development of a new version of core continues. Every time we start pushing that forward, dude, everything's broken. Dude, everything's broken. Dude, everything is still broken. We finally get to a near release of core, and finally, okay, fine, sure. Okay, let's go ahead and fix you, finally. And then, of course, they're cursing themselves because their release date goes out the window. 
So the core developer is sitting there also at 2 a.m. over a half-eaten tuna fish sandwich watching Star Trek III, and they're going, why am I developing code not used by 90% of all the Drupal sites out there? This should be Contrib's problem. If it's not 90% of sites, it shouldn't be in core. It should be Contrib. So then everyone starts pointing fingers. Everyone's saying, this is your fault. No one is actually fixing the problem, and the problem isn't just in examples. It gets even worse. The reality is that example module became a forerunner for what we're seeing here for Drupal 8, which is that example module isn't quite core, isn't quite contrib, but it highlighted a growing cultural divide in our Drupal development community, one that's only going to get worse in time if we don't do something about it. We need a third option. The example module does provide checks and balances against core. A core developer might say, well, this, you know, makes core, uh, this makes core better, faster, and easier, but does it really work for contrib? We need to have those checks and balances constantly. Also, example module has a number of key advantages that are excellent for making it a forerunner for testing new versions of core, but in a completely proce uh, process isolated fashion. It's core isolated. It tests DX before core is frozen because examples is usually developed while core is finishing up, usually before most contrib modules even dare to touch updating their modules. <coughs> also, if we put example module in core, it would have a really, really weird dev cycle. So you have a new version of core, and then you have example module. We disable all of the example module tests because we have real work to do. So development continues on core, but development is halted for examples. Eventually we get to a near alpha and we start updating the example code to fix all of those, te uh, those tests that we had disabled months or years before. Once we have the examples completed, we can finally, you know, release a stable version of core. Okay, that sounds pretty weird. That's, that's kind of unprecedented. We've never done that before, right? Please tell me we haven't. Oh, crud. We did do this. We already did do this. When we put Migrate Module into Core, we disabled all of its tests because we had work to do. <laughs> that's not the only problem. If we were to put example module into core, where the heck would it live? Here we have a simplified, uh, simplified directory structure of, core mo of uh, Drupal 8 core. We want to put it somewhere so that developers can easily find it, but we want to keep it hidden from users so they don't enable it on a production site, so they don't start building their entire site over the robot entity type that we have in examples. Because <laughs> trust me, someone will do it. And then pay lots of consulting money to fix it. We could put it in modules slash examples because, you know, it's a natural place. It's where all the other contrib modules live. The thing is we'd either have to delete it once we, install, uh, once we install it or we'd have to hide it in admin extend to make sure that not every user just doesn't blunder in and decide to enable it. Okay, fine. Let's put it in core modules examples because, you know, that's where all the other core modules go. That makes sense, right? But the thing is that examples really isn't a core module. If we put it there, I mean, you really can't, it's not as easily discoverable. Okay, fine. So that doesn't work. Let's just put it in the core directory. Okay, it keeps it in the slash core directory, sure, so that every time we update core, it gets updated. But it's not really in core. Okay, sure, it's hidden for users. It's a bit more discoverable to, uh, for developers because as soon as you start going in there, there's like, Oh, there's like three or four directories here. Oh, core directory. Oh, examples. There we go. I mean, you can't, it's hard to miss. <coughs> of course, if that doesn't work, we could just put it in the root directory. You can't miss it there, but now it's outside of the core directory, so now we don't have a standard means of updating by just deleting the core directory and replacing it. Now we have an exception. So we have to move it or copy it to enable it, too, so that doesn't Jeez, we don't even know why, where we should put it in the directory if we were to do it. 
Semantic versioning could mean that core moves faster, but is this really fast enough for examples? We're already talking about every six months we should have a new version of core where we can actually add new APIs. But that's every six months that we'd have to wait to add a new example. So after looking at all of this, all uh, sitting down and thinking about all of these problems that core example module is <coughs> facing, I started realizing that the pro we're sol trying to solve the wrong problem. We're approaching this as a technical problem trying to find a way to make sure that example module gets developed so that we have people that are happy and contrib that have examples to base their work on. But it doesn't really want to live in core because that doesn't, that's a complete cultural mismatch. So what's going on? Well, the problem is people. It's the pro problem that most developers never want to hear about. The problem is people, it's not code. We have a stalemate between core and contrib today, one that's really, really worrying me. Everyone's pointing fingers. No one's really fixing the problem. We need someone to stand up, someone whose job it is to stand up and go, hey, that's not fixing anything. We need to sit down and try to fix this. And I like to call that person the contrib champ. The contrib champion isn't a new idea. It's based on something from, cloud, uh, from cl enterprise cloud environments called the cloud champion. It's a proven way to roll out large, intimidating changes in an enterprise. Intimidating changes. Sound familiar to anyone in this room? <coughs> the goal is really to support contrib developers through documentation, mediation, sample code, and public outreach in order to ensure successful deployment of a new version of core so that contrib developers have someone to go to. I like saying that it really means three things. It means someone that can raise excitement, someone that can mediate problems, and someone that can educate individuals and can contrib developers. <coughs> the first most obvious thing is raising excitement. It's the first most obvious role. It provides a consistent venue for information and discussion. Right now, you can find a lot of information on Drupal 8. Two years ago, this wasn't the case. A year ago, this wasn't the case. But it's still disorganized. Every time you try to solve a problem in Drupal 8, even today, you'll get five articles giving you different solutions to do the same thing. There's no canonical source. And all of those are inconsistently updated, from individuals, there's no organization. Now that's fine when your project is small. We're not small anymore. Core isn't small anymore. Our community isn't small anymore. We have reached, uh, went way past an inflection point where we can depend on the nebulous community to fix all of this. We need to do better. One thing that, a court, uh, that the Contrib Champion could do is to support key frontline modules, modules that are willing to go, I don't care if core is really broken and really weird and everything's going to change, I'm going to develop for it anyways. Modules like examples, like flag, like rules, like Drupal console. Modules that are there at the very beginning because they really don't care. They don't have anything to lose, so why not? This could mean assisting with crowdfunding, with, you know, with awareness, or even really, really importantly, knowledge transfer, which is the biggest problem we have in core today with respect to contrib developers. Another major thing that's really important and one that is not a very easy subject to broach is mediation. We'll have a contrib developer and they say they have some valid, have valid concerns about core. They might have already gone to an issue queue and complained about it. Why did you break my module? They might have already gone to, uh, to IRC and wondered why uh, did everything change? Why did you rip out hook menu? That was good. It did everything I needed to do. Why is it now four different files? Why in the heck did you do that? And the thing is that when, you, when someone who is a contrib developer says that and a core developer hears it, they're going to be angry because they worked a lot, uh, really hard on that. And they do have good reasons. But the problem is that some, when you're approached like that, you're immediately feeling attacked. 
So as a result, you're going to be on the defensive when you start talking. And if someone is up late, has had a bad week, it had, didn't have their dinner on time or something, they might go off the handle. And suddenly we're going to have a contrib developer thinking, maybe I don't want to work on Drupal anymore. So a contrib developer can go to the contrib champion and express these concerns. We can, uh, they might not be uncomfortable bringing them directly because they might have gotten burned before. So the contrib champion can document them. And then later on can go to the core developer and actually in a structured approach actually communicate all of these concerns so that we can actually figure out what's going on. And in some cases, core developers might not even know there's a problem because one thing that happens a lot, and particularly in Drupal 8's development cycle, is there's a lot of people too scared to say anything. A lot of contrib developers are scared out of their mind right now because Drupal 8 is that big and that different. They're thinking they're going to get eaten. We're all new developers again. So the, uh, so the contrib champion can communicate this structurally, figure out what's going on, document them, and then figure out a way of communicating that back to the larger community as a source of truth. Mediation provides a back channel so that issues can be heard while reducing footwork for everybody because now it's somebody's job. We have a goal gap. Also, we have another problem, change shock. A contrib champion can help mit mitigate change shock. During this Drupal development, because what happens is that the worst thing that can happen to a, to a large open source project like Drupal is what happened in Drupal 8. Does any of this look familiar? I no longer under understand how core works or someone completely out of the blue saying, please remove me from maintainers.txt, or, or, or a long-standing core developer saying, core no longer supports hobbyists. If you're a contrib developer who works on just their module and is happy working on just their module, and you hear this on social media with no context, you're terrified. You're thinking that the next version of core is going to be an absolute corker and you're not going to want to touch it with a 10-foot cattle prod. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt are inevitable when change is huge and easily created unintentionally. And we've done that a lot in the Drupal 8 development cycle. It also comes down to that messaging thing. We might have a core developer who says, I need to reduce my role in core. If you say that on social media because you have no one to say it to first, it's going to create FUD no matter what you do. Someone has to be there to hear it first and then ask the next question, why? It's a simple question, but it makes a huge difference. And it turns out, nine times out of ten, particularly in the Drupal 8 development cycle, they might just have kids, and they need to reduce their effort. I think Dave Reed had this problem just a few months ago. He put a tweet out <laughs> saying that he wanted to like reduce his involvement in Drupal, and everyone panicked. And then about four hours later, thankfully, he sat down and wrote a very lengthy Google Plus page describing why and what his point was. And it made all the difference in the world. <laughs> Not all core developers are really very good at that. They like just working on their own stuff. Because, you know, like a lot of software developers, core and contrib alike, we might be antisocial, we might not like talking about these things, we might want to just say something and be done with it. The 140 character limit does not help us here. The contrib champion can actually listen to this first and then manage that transition. Bring that announcement forward saying, oh, they're just going to refocus on family issues. This particular developer will be taking over for their responsibilities in the interim. And suddenly if you hear it like that as a contrib developer, you're not worried anymore. You're like, okay, I gotcha, no problem. 
FUD needs to be constantly and carefully managed because if no one does it, it only confirms people's unspoken fears. <laughs> the other last goal I think that the Contrib Champion needs to do is education. We have that new developer who's looking at Drupal, a new version of core, it's huge and intimidating, thinking they're going to get eaten. And the Contrib Champion can be there saying, it's dangerous to Drupal alone, take this. Da, 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 da. Examples is only one avenue. Blog posts, documentation, videos, organizing sprints. There's lots of different ways to do education for new versions of core. But we don't need just one person. We need an initiative. We need multiple people, multiple team members from multiple companies. Naturally, I think of from a lot of Drupal companies, people who are community liaisons, project managers, mentors, <coughs> individuals who have that kind of focus already that can also work toward this. So let's recap. Examples does have a special role in the community because it boots it onboards new developers, kickstarts module updates, signals that core, uh, new, uh, new version of core is ready. Both sides are right in the argument. The examples is special to the community, but core inclusion isn't a good fit. The problem isn't core, the problem isn't code. The problem is that people's needs aren't being met and there's no easy way to meet those without change. We need a contribute champion. We need someone who can mediate concerns about core, support documentation and examples and boost key frontline modules. The Contrib Champion is a social solution to the social problems of implementing change in a technical context. So please, please, let's not point fingers anymore. <coughs> let's make Contrib happy for everyone. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to be sprinting on Friday. Learn and contribute to Drupal Core. We'll have mentors there to help you set up. It's going to be right here Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in room 403. Thank you. I'm Socket Wench. You can find this presentation online. Yay. Who wants another shirt? I got a shirt. It's a large. Anyone? Oh, almost. <laughs> I've got, let's see, your. That's with my injured arm. I'm going to regret that in 45 seconds. Who wants another shirt? <laughs> <laughs> 15 seconds, so I better get this one out. It's a 3X. Anyone? Anyone? No? Way over there, back there? Okay, sure. Oh, man, I've got such a bad arm today. <laughs> I also have some flag module stickers up here if anyone wants them. Just go ahead and come take them up here. All right, are there any, any questions? We got a question way back there? So where do they come from? Do they, do they just grow out of the ground? Or <laughs> is, there, <coughs> is this something you would see like the Drupal Association organizing? Like, how, wh I agree with you totally on this. Where do they come from? Where, how do they, yeah. So yeah, that's one of the biggest questions and I don't know. The Drupal Association seems to be the most logical thing in my opinion. I've had a few arguments with them about this so they don't always think that it's a good idea. Why? Why? I think it's probably because they thought that their job wasn't to help contrib as much and more run events and support core development. I know. <laughs> See, the thing is that argument was two years ago and in those two years their focus has slightly drifted from that statement in practice. So it, it bears re-examining in my opinion, but no one's really listening. <laughs> That's why I'm up here begging people today. <laughs> you have a question? Um, so I guess this is really sort of what needs to be done and sort of who needs to do it, but how would they sort of do this? Because there's a lot of interaction with like uh, all of the core maintainers and then I guess it, it's a there's a lot more than just working on examples. 
Yeah, there is. And I don't know what that is either. Okay, so so that, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. I had this idea because I only identified the role gap. I have no idea how to approach it yet. I also really need ideas. I need ideas from everyone on how to actually get this across. <laughs> can we like can we like contact Forum Bomb the association and all ask for this? public board meeting tomorrow. And that would probably be the, the first best place to start with that conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, geez. I think you had your hand up first. Can you just a sec. Why the community champion is tied to the examples module? Why we aren't two? They are two separate issues, really. This is just how I discovered it. <coughs> And I really thought that it was important to put it in context of one of these frontline modules to show why we were having this problem. And we had a lot of modules that wanted to just get into core at the time. And that isn't really a solution. Because again, that's, you know, it's a technical solution, not a social solution. And we have the wrong problem here. I think you were next. So what I was going to say was that um, from my perspective that this is really tied uh, toward how the sort of core mentoring program works and stuff like that because usually that's where you find people who have energy and time and willingness and so I'm right now working on a few like trying to get got form elements reference back in the docs right now. That's sort of my pet champion thing. And uh, so one of the ways that, that I sort of got more involved in Drupal was through the core mentor sprint stuff, like last Pacific Northwest Drupal Summit. And, um, and it strikes me that like right now in terms of like getting the word out about how to reduce FUD and get people to understand how to use core and, and those kinds of things. It seems to me that that and the API docs and the example docs are all kind of integrally tied together in, ter in terms of, okay, so, so, so you, I've been through that fairly recently where you try and get involved in Drupal and it's kind of like, ah! There's like all this stuff. What are it's like you're rolling the dice, figuring you got maybe ah oh, I got a I got a chance of getting a patch in before I'm done for this conference, right? That's kind of how it feels to begin with, and you're and, and you're and you're kind of doing that. But part of that is because of the high barrier to entry around that stuff. And so for me, it's like the people who are running the core mentor spreads are already doing a really really good job of grabbing people and pulling together and and giving kind of what I would call training opportunities about uh, that are the reward that you get for starting to get involved in core and so to some extent when I look at the the gap here from that perspective the solution has got to lie in that same structure because the mentorship the mentorship program, the, the, the way that that program works and the way that it kind of gives you the opportunity to kind of where people kind of are in the right headspace. They're honoring your, your, uh, they're honoring your concerns and your confusion and stuff like that in a way that doesn't always happen in the other environments because it's kind of like, well, I'm busy and I'm just trying to get stuff done, right? But, but there's that space that happens where people are actually in the right headspace for welcoming the confusion that people might have in an API or something like that. And so th I think there, that that's where you're likely to uncover a lot of the FUD from that perspective. And if that were more, uh, more in line with training opportunities, and I'm not quite sure how to do that. I mean, maybe there's some partner programs that need to be worked out about working through example.modules. If we got all these people come and giving these trainings on development, you know, maybe that could be harnessed for the goodness of like the API docs and stuff like that. Because, you know, that seems like a big gap. Yeah, the, the only reason why I didn't feature mentors more strongly in this is because a lot of mentoring revolves around contributing to core 
it doesn't uh, revolve a lot to contributing to contrib. And Kathy's going to correct me in five seconds, I'm sure. Oh, no. No. Um, I was about to want to disagree with you completely un until you got to the point about the headspace mm -hmm. thing, right. which matches what you said about the social problem thing. And then I was like, oh, that's really a good point. Um, but core mentors are structured around core. Um, there aren't a surplus of them to take on a new responsibility. Um, but I talked to Fubi um, in France at Dev Days, and uh, I think there could be an untapped resource of people who could maybe model some things after the mentoring thing and like if they get those new people that are in contrib but want to help with core but they feel like they can't kind of thing and you get them started and set that up, they'll be in that good headspace and you're not asking people who are already doing too much to do more, right? That's the tricky bit. Like where are you gonna get these people, right? Who, and you get them from people who want to help but aren't. You can't get people who are already helping to help. That's not going to happen. And it's, it's more than just having it resol revolve around sprints. Well, uh, this is the thing. A lot of contrib development doesn't happen at a sprint. And a lot of mentoring happens around sprints. So there's a bit of a mismatch there as well. There, there is a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... It strikes me as really interesting that the API doc examples that I am working on writing are core. And that the examples that are in the example modules are not core from the way that you just represented that perspective. And um, so from that perspective, I mean, <laughs> I'm busy trying to puzzle out and figure out how how to like get this communications gap dealt with because actually I have a team of developers and the reason I'm interested is because I have a team of developers that I have to train on how to upgrade a boatload of modules. I've got like a seven year s r cycle of module upgrades that I'm going to have to start back when I get back home. And, um, and I got to train these guys on that stuff. And right now, the best way that people talk about, well, how do you learn how core is supposed to work and how you develop a base module and stuff like that is like nine times out of ten you get referred to the change logs, right? And it's like, okay, so I'm supposed to throw a new developer at change logs, multi-version community docs, and that's going to get them ramped up on object-oriented programming done right? Heck no, right? So, so from that perspective, I think there's a real problem with thinking about code examples as not core from just from the perspective of the of the mentoring program and the getting the word out and the bringing people in not from the perspective of anything else really and and i'm really only i'm not talking about all of contrib i'm not even talking about rules or something like that i'm talking about just core examples and how you get i mean if you go to jquery you sure as heck don't expect to find a pointer to the raw code to figure out how to use jQuery, right? And you don't really expect to find multi-version stuff to figure out how to use jQuery. You expect there to find curated code examples for how things are supposed to be done. And from that perspective, our community has fallen behind a little bit in that regard in terms of API docs compared to other stuff. So, a lot of the core exam, a lot of the example modules just basically sat unupdated for about a period of eight months until after I had been working on flag module and fighting every night to actually get that to work because that was the only way to figure it out. I had um, change logs weren't useful. Reading issues weren't useful. Reading even code wasn't useful. I had to actually copy code, make it break, and then beg people on IRC to find out how this was supposed to work. <laughs> And then I was able to translate that into example code. I didn't want other people to have to do what I did because I'm a glutton for punishment, but I don't want other people to be punished. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Uh, so somebody asked over there about how like examples, you know, ties in with this contrib champion thing. And so I think that's the thing I got out of this talk is I thought examples was that. And so I got from this why it isn't and why it needs to be something separate. So that makes a lot more sense to me now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like to say that it shouldn't be in core, but it's process tied to core. But we don't have any people process to tie it right now. We're depending on the nebulous community to fix everything. And I don't think that will work for, uh, for now because it hasn't been working for two years. You had something? So you, you talked about needing a new initiative um, for the contrib champion. Um, it seems to me that much easier than starting a new initiative is hijacking an existing one. <laughs> So we, we have a developer experience initiative, right? The DX, at least, at least DX tag. I think there's an initiative tied to that. Vaguely. It doesn't have a lot of traction or contrib social significance. You're saying that it's ripe for hijacking. It is. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's take over. It. Yes, let's take over the DX initiative and make it do what needs to be done. I'd like to say that would be a wonderful solution, but that's only part of it. Having a name is only part of it. We do need someone whose job it is to actually do this. My job isn't to work on examples. My job isn't to work on flag. I'm pay I work to, uh, work to do client work. I only do this uh, everything else on my own personal time. And it's painful because I know if I were to sit down and have a week to work on this, I could get most of examples done and we would have some really good stuff, but no one's stepping up because there's no money behind it. Uh, you talk to the trading companies to fund it. <laughs> I would like to talk to the trading companies to fund me, Kathy, but that's why I'm here begging people now. <laughs> or, or talk to the trading companies to fund somebody else. You already have a job. Don't get me wrong, I'd gladly do it if someone said I could. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>